Eric Bory, thank yes. you for having us here at Microsoft. You're in charge of AI platform here. And the, all the AI question we've got are for you now. That sounds great. Um, you've been here for 15 years. I have. So were you working on AI since the beginning? So I joined Microsoft uh, initially to work on the Bing Ads team, and you know one of the things that maybe people don't realize is you can't really have a search engine without AI, and so everything from you know trying to figure out how do we rank the different things that come back that's all based in AI, uh, and so to even the ads that we want to show to customers, how do we want to think about the most relevant ads? We have algorithms for all of that, um, but AI has progressed so much since then, and uh, a lot of the foundation that Microsoft built in AI came out of the work that we did in Bing. And so, you know, we did things like building vision models or building models to understand speech recognition. Um, and those turned into the foundations for, you know, the things that we eventually sold through Azure AI. And so it's really been this building process, you know, even going back long before Bing, over decades of how we sort of got to where we're at. So you are telling us that Microsoft is not a brand new competitor in the AI you know, the Five. interesting thing, you know, the world kind of woke up to AI, you know, when uh, these new models came out a couple of years ago, and everyone's like, wow, this is like this overnight success. And like most overnight successes, it's decades in the making. And so we started Microsoft Research, you know, 25-ish years ago. Uh, we've been having AI breakthroughs through the 80s, through the 90s. And so Microsoft has really been at the forefront of this for years. And so to us, it feels very natural that we're continuing to push in AI. Um, but yes, it does look like AI kind of came out of nowhere to a lot of people. What was the first AI ID at Microsoft? What was the philosophical aspect of adding what we won't call AI at that time? I mean, AI's got its roots really going back to like the 1960s, and so all of this academic research and things, can you teach machines to learn? And you know, and it had lots of roots in, you know, games like chess and the like. Um, and at Microsoft, you know, we knew that there would be real-world applications of this, but we weren't really sure where. And so that's where Microsoft Research really started investing in just doing the research. Let's push this frontier forward, um, and it started to show up in lots of different ways in our products, um, you know, famously there's of course Clippy, which is maybe not our proudest AI moment, <laughs> um, but sort of shows you sort of the types of things that we were thinking about. I mean, Clippy came out, I think, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, but you really start to see it in products with things like speech recognition. You know, you and I now take for granted that it's faster to send a text message by talking to my phone and having it transcribe it than it is for me to hunt and peck everything on there. Um, well, that's AI under the covers, and that's AI that's been refined really over years. And, you know, it came into to its own early in sort of like the 2010s and sort of that time period. And so we just start to see it in all of the products continuing to move it forward. What was the uh, idea of and Microsoft AI? What is your philosophy about this? What do you want AI to be for? S so at, at Microsoft, we've, you know, for a long time been a company that's trying to help make others successful, help make them more productive. You know, our mission is to empower every person and organiza organization on the planet to achieve more. And AI fits right into that because it's such an incredible productivity tool. Uh, it just makes people better at the work that they're doing. It helps them do the work that they're doing. And that's really our vision for this is to enable all these people who are going out and having amazingly productive careers and jobs and personal lives to have this tool that's going to help them get better at all of that, do all of that better. Um, and so this, this co-pilot metaphor that we've taken across all of our products is really, we really like that metaphor a lot, right? You're in charge, you're the pilot, and you've got this co-pilot who's really helping you understand everything, get answers to questions faster, get tasks done for you. So that's really where we're headed with it. We seem to, we seem to talk about AI a lot for every product. What was, uh, according to you, the turning point of AI? I mean, it's interesting when you say the turning point because I've been in this space for such a long time. 
Search engines is certainly one turning point where suddenly we had AI as a business model that starts to work. I think you know when we got some of the new models and, and sort of architectures that came out in like the 2010s, we called them you know deep learning or, or you know deep machine learning. Um, that enabled speech recognition to really work in a way that it hadn't before. But I think really for most people, they woke up in probably the last two or three years with these large language models and these language models that now you can have conversations with that seem to understand the world, they can reason, they have logic, um, and the types of things that they're capable of doing, I think for most people they're like, now I understand that AI is real. They've been using it for years and maybe not fully understanding it, but now I think it's really real to a lot of people. How do you see your user uh, dealing with AI? Are they familiar? Uh, how can you make them aware of using AI can be a good thing and not always a bad thing, stealing their jobs, what what we can hear sometimes. Yeah, sure. I mean, again, it, it gets to your, your question of like using AI. I don't know that most people think about using AI, right? Most people don't think about using AI when they search the internet. But of course, there are tons of AI algorithms behind the scenes that are providing that. I don't think of using AI when I talk to my phone, but of course, I'm doing that. And now I don't think of using AI when I talk to Microsoft Copilot and ask it, you know, to sort of reason over some things or to help me compose an email or to do those different things. They're just tools that I'm using to make me more productive in the work that I'm doing. And so I think people need to learn how to use these tools because they're new. And you have to figure out how is this new tool going to help me get my work done. But I don't think of it as like this big sort of lift of like it's a, it's a completely different way of working. No, I have a new tool that's going to help me get things done in a really much faster way. Do you think we talked too much about AI for anything and it can be it could be just normal to add AI and okay working doing things creativity and things without saying AI All, all day long. I mean, I, I, if you think about the major um, innovations that we've seen over our lifetimes, mm -hmm. right? The internet, the mobile phones. Do we talk about adding the internet to something? We used to. We used to talk about all those commercials and it said dot com and that was, mm -hmm. but now it's just, it's a part of the fabric of our life. When you use your phone, your mobile phone for something, you don't think of it having been done specifically on mobile. And I think AI is the same way. It's this transformative tool that's going to change the way so much of our life works, but I don't think it'll it'll just get woven into the fabric of how we do everything, and I don't think it'll feel like, oh, I'm going to now go and use AI. I'm, I'm just going to use the tools and the technologies and the things that I'm doing in a very natural way. I think we'll expect to see all of that. Microsoft is turning 50. Yeah. Uh, is AI the biggest shift you've, you've seen in the history of the firm, or uh, is it the natural evolution of it? It's an interesting question. I mean, it definitely, we have pivoted the company in a way that I've not seen us pivot it in the past. Um, you know, we, we have a partnership with OpenAI, mm -hmm. and when we first saw models like GPT-4, um, you know, Satya sat down with his leadership team and said, hey, I want you to come up with plans for how this is going to show up in your products. And, you know, the way Microsoft works, of course, everybody has product plans and things that they've planned out for years, but everybody threw those plans out the window and said, we're going to go do something And different. There was a marked shift, and that's unlike anything that I've seen in, in my career anywhere, and certainly in the 15 years that I've been at Microsoft. So it's definitely a, a key focus for our company going forward. Let's talk about OpenAI and your partnership. You have invested a lot in OpenAI. Uh, what was the idea? Why did you choose that instead of relying on your R&D and do your own stuff, you can, you can here at Microsoft. I mean, we do both, and we continue to both produce our own models as well as partner with OpenAI. The partnership with OpenAI was born years ago out of seeing this is a lab that's really focused on doing innovative and interesting work in this space, um, and they saw some of the same trends that we saw. Uh, you know, those trends really said, what we're seeing with large language models is pretty powerful. We were at such an early stage, and you know, the models were so big, we couldn't even conceive of them that large. 
but we had this idea that, and they had the same point, what if we built a really big computer? At the time it was, the, I think, the world's fourth largest mm -hmm. supercomputer, and we built a really big model. What would happen? And I think it's safe to say it exceeded all of our expectations, but that was really the bet that we made jointly with them is we think this is going to be something really big and really interesting, and we think this partnership is going to help propel it. And it's been amazingly successful for both of us. There is a, I don't say a war, but something like that in the world today about AI. Uh, was going to be the biggest one in AI. How do you see that? Is it a good thing? Should people work together around the world? So, I mean, I guess I look at it this way. Uh, we're creating these incredible new tools for people, and we want to bring them into our market to help our customers in the best way that we see possible. It shouldn't surprise us that there are other companies out there going after the same thing, but we remain focused on the customers that we serve and the things that they're asking us for and the things we think we can go and deliver for them. Um, and that's really what guides us and, and building products that are going to make people more productive. There is always question about security, privacy, and things like that when we talk about AI. Yeah. Um, how hard is it to deal with it? Because AI is going so fast, and every time you find a new thing, you have to deal with hackers and other stuff. Yeah, it's a really important question. It's something that Microsoft thinks really deeply about. Um, you know, we've been privileged to work with enterprises all throughout our career. Uh, we're trusted with some of the company's most important and private data, their email, their documents, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of that thing. And so we have built a relationship with our customers on the trust that they have that we're going to protect their privacy, we're going to secure their documents, we're going to do this in the most responsible way. And we bring all of those practices to the work that we do with AI. We focused on responsibility. AI from the start, really thinking through how do we ensure our products are going to be safe and not be biased and going to work the way that our customers want them to. Um, and that just shows up in every aspect of what we're doing. And about cybersecurity, is AI a good point or a bad point? You know, AI is a tool, and like any tool, you can use it for positive uses and for negative uses. In cybersecurity, we certainly see places where hackers are looking to try and get models to do things that the customers who are using them don't want them to. So we provide our customers with tools powered by AI to help prevent that, you know, and so things to look for, you know, ways, how do we think hackers are going to try and poke at the model? Let's detect that, let's shut that down and stop that. And we build that right into all the systems that we make available. You're doing a lot of stuff uh, about with AI at Microsoft, different topics, different things. Did you make any mistake on the way? Things you thought that AI can be useful, but finally was not? I mean, I think a lot of the things, if I were to characterize, I mean, mistakes is an interesting turn of phrase. Um, there are things that we've seen that were too early. You know, I mean, I brought up Clippy. Mm -hmm. um, Clippy was way too early. It wasn't good enough at what it did, and it didn't deliver on the customer problems. Um, and that was, of course, decades ago. You know, I think in recent times, we use AI in lots of different places, but it's all about finding where is it really helping customers in the biggest way. And so there's been just this continual iteration to try and find what's going to work best for customers. And I think we're still in the very early phrases of it. Was Kinect something like an AI stuff, the Kinect? So Kinect the Xbox controller? Yes. So Kinect, and I'm not terribly familiar with it, but the Kinect definitely had a, uh, a, uh, a camera system mm. that recognized people. And so I got to imagine that mm. was built on AI. But again, I'm not super It was too early, too. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, I had a Kinect. It was pretty cool, and it was mm. very useful for the types of things that it wanted. I think the key, uh, for me, it was a gaming question, right? Mm. Did I have enough space <laughs> in my living room to want to stand up and play games like that? It, was, it didn't work for me. <laughs> What is the future of AI? because it's going too fast, so the future can be tomorrow or in one week or Yeah, more. I mean, this is a space where I, I, it's hard to make predictions, right? A couple of years ago, would I have guessed we'd be here? I would not. Um, but I think we do see some trends, and so we can kind of build on that. Uh, the models are continuing to get better. They're more knowledgeable, better at math, at reasoning and logic. Um, and we're now building ways for models to call different tools and, and to perform work for you. And, uh, you know, I think that's the thing 
thing that we're going to start to see. We're going to move from this world where I expect to chat with a model about you know some documents or something to a world where I want it to go and, and get some work done for me, right? Like we just recently announced in the programming domain, like go and solve these bugs for me. And it'll go and it'll work and it'll solve these bugs and come back and show you the answer for it. That's the type of thing I think we're going to expect to see in the legal field. We see customers who are you know, saying, hey, please go and, and scan these documents and find the relevant ones for me. Uh, the medical field, we see doctors who are saying, listen to this conversation that I have with a patient and produce me a medical record. Record, right, doing that type of, of actual work, I think we're going to see a lot more of that, and I think that's going to be really transformative to a lot the way a lot of people work. You are involved and in investing a lot uh, in Europe uh, about AI, yeah, uh, in Germany, in France too. Uh, what it, is it important for you to be there? I mean, we really try and go where all of our customers are, right? We're a global company, and so uh, we serve, obviously, the United States, but we have massive uh, customer bases in Europe and in Asia, and we really want to make sure that we're serving customers all around the world. And, I mean, we have customer stories from all around the world, right? I mean, in France, we work with uh, La Grande, which mm. is a you know, manufacturer of thousands and thousands of products, and they use AI to help their sales reps understand what all the different products are doing. We see that in every corner of the globe, and we just want to make sure Sure we're connecting to people everywhere. Do you think we have some AI talent in France? There are definitely some AI talent in France. We have a good partnership with Mistral, mm -hmm. which is a French-based company and produces some excellent large language models. And so, um, you know, we work with, with people really all over the world. There's talent everywhere. And so figuring out how you can harness it and get it to people to do the, the most amazing things, that's what we're all about. Do you think AI, the race to the perfect AI should be a, a global affair? Uh, a, a, a partnership with everyone? I mean, the premise of your question of a perfect AI, like, I don't know what that is, right? <laughs> Does it exist? I, I don't know what it means. We're trying to build tools, and we've built tools that are able to do amazingly useful things and deploy them in lots of different ways. And we see people all over the globe experimenting with, you know, different model architectures, different ways they can use AI, different tools they'll call, different actions they can give them. And so I think that's the really exciting thing about the way the world works is let's see how let's see what everyone's going to go do and let's find the best ideas and, and do more of that how do you want people to see microsoft when we talk about ai how do you, they can recognize you work in ai I mean, Microsoft, we sort of started there, right? Microsoft has been at AI for decades. And uh, building on our history of AI, we're really focused on how it's going to power us in the future. We've been an organization that is trying to figure out how do we get, how do we help people become more productive? And so that's something that we're just continuing to focus on. Thank you very much. Of course. Great.